Okay, so moving on to the last unit uh, in this part of in this today, um, the last component of this unit, I guess I should say, I want to talk a little bit about the frame buffer. So we've talked about the building blocks of rendering pixels a lot, and now we're going to go back to the actual rendering problem. How do we go from data um, to things on our screen? You might have heard about the frame buffer. You'll read about it in graphics libraries. It's nothing fancy. In computer science, every time you hear buffer, you should just think bunch of memory. So that's all that it is. A frame buffer, this is memory, um, typically video RAM. So it could be on the video card, specialized RAM. It doesn't have to be. Dedic um, embedded machines or old machines might just use regular RAM um, that stores the color values for each pixel on the display. Okay, so we have this piece of memory and it keeps track of what colors all the pixels should be. Okay, so we have this frame buffer in memory we have a, typically a video card, some kind of video card, right? Some kind of video card in your computer that's connected to a display monitor. It's your display. So what the computer does, either as a video card or some program, something in your computer needs to do this transition, right? It needs to constantly push um, the frame buffer data. So all the data in the frame buffer, all the pixels, what you decided the pixel color should be, should copy that from the frame buffer, uh, the data in the frame buffer, to the display. So something needs to say, here's what the pixels should be, put it on the screen. And in fact, it happens right over and over and over again. Your computer is constantly changing, you're moving a mouse around, um, you're moving your windows, a game's animating, so it happens. That has to happen regularly. There's typically some standard frequency, frequency right? So these days, 60 hertz, remember that hertz means cycles per second. So our 60 hertz just means 60 times per second, okay? So some standard, um, typically 60 hertz, some interfaces are still 30 hertz, some games want to be 120 hertz. If things are moving, it needs to be higher. I would you know, play with this. Go into your Windows settings. You can actually choose your refresh rate. Change it to 30, and you'll see how slow 30 times a second feels compares with 60, which is probably what it's set to now. So when we learn about the frame buffer and how things push onto your display, it's actually quite useful to learn about how old displays work, CRT monitors work. And the reason we learn that is because a lot of the algorithms, a lot of the techniques, even the vocabulary, have emerged from that history. So first I want to talk about scan lines. We still do a lot of scan line stuff, um, but typically a scan line is simply a horizontal line on your display. Right, just a horizontal line, they call them a scan line. And the reason they're horizontal is because of how old monitors used to work. Um, old CRT, CRT stands for cathode ray tube. I'll talk about that in a second. But these old monitors and your old TVs, the hardware um, was designed to draw line by line. What's it? to draw line by line, okay? So, uh, and then horizontal first is the key. So the way that these old TVs and monitors worked, they have a big tube, 
at the back of the tube, they have an electron gun. It's actually shooting off like a beam, like a beam of electrons. And when they hit your screen, they light up. And so you can imagine it can aim wherever it wants to, but you only have one gun. Okay. So the way that it worked was it would just scan across and then change the intensity as it's scanning. And so then you'd get a different picture come up. Let me draw what that would look like. So if this is my raster here, then what happens with the, 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 the gun would draw this way first. And as it went across, it would change the intensity to make brighter and darker pixels. And then when it reached the edge, it would turn off the gun and move back to the next row and then write it again. Turn off the gun and come back. So you got this pattern where it would go like this. It would come back like this and go this way on, come back off, this way on, and so on and so forth until the bottom, at which point it would turn off and come all, all the way back up to the top. I'm going to come back to that, but this is how they worked. And now, one of, the, whoopsie, okay, let's try that again. Uh, one of these is this called a scan line. That's it scan one line at a time. What's really neat is these old monitors, the, the gun was not a perfect focus, so you'd have color bleed. It didn't matter left and right because you're changing your intensity really quickly as you go. You could get good resolution, but um, vertically, you got color bleed. So to compensate, they used to have extra space. To compensate um, for vertical color bleed, um, lines are spaced out. Check this out. I have a slide. Bam. There we go. Remember old video game, 90s, on an old screen. You can see, if you look closely, you can see the spaces between the lines because of scan line spacing. That's, all, that's why they did that. Neat. Okay. Now, of course, modern systems don't have this tech. We have LCD monitors now. We don't have a single gun. We can update everything in parallel. So modern systems are a little nicer. All that they do is they copy the memory. Oops. So modern systems, so say um, your HDMI cable, your DisplayPort cable, all that they do is they just, just copy from VRAM inside your computer, right, inside your computer to uh, memory inside a monitor. Right? You copy into the monitor. Then the monitor decides how to draw however it wants. So the monitor can be can be clever based on knowledge of its own hardware. You don't have the scan line problem like you had in the old um, analog systems. 